All right, welcome to today's episode of Tomorrow's Leader, where we dive deep on all things leader related. If you're watching from YouTube, you probably noticed I'm wearing a hat. Well, there's two reasons I'm wearing a hat. One is it has now been three months since I've had a haircut. So my hair is looking big and bushy. That's reason number one. So uh, reason number two is um, it has something to do with what we're going to talk about today. So uh, you'll hear in a moment. But uh, I wanted to share with you a question that I got. I was talking to a leader recently who asked a great question, question that I think a lot of people have. And that question has to do with business and really life in general. It was posed to me as a business question. And that was, as the leader of an organization, how do you know when the current plan that you're on is or path that you're on is the wrong one? When do you know when it's time to either pull the plug on something that you're doing or hit the pause button and just change directions? And that's such a great question because what weighs in everybody's mind is, okay, if I, is the reason I'm not having success just that I need to keep doing what I'm doing and doing, doing and keep doing it over and over and over again and not give up? Uh, or is the strategy flawed and uh, I'm not going to see results if I keep going on this path? And uh, oftentimes there's a lot at stake. Sometimes it's money, sometimes it's people, sometimes it's the organization itself thriving or succeeding or failing. Um, and sometimes it can have a big ripple effect and impact many, many other areas of the business as well. So it's an important question to answer. The answer uh, that I gave and that I've always come up with is it depends on the reason and you have to figure out the reason why you have not had success on that path so far. And ultimately, that's going to help you answer the question as to whether you need to keep going or pull the plug. Um, there's all kinds of reasons why we may not have had success. We might not be executing it right. Maybe the strategy is flawed. Or maybe we're executing it right, but we're not executing enough. And uh, that may be due to other issues. It could be motivation. It could be all kinds of stuff. So when we figure out the answer to that, that's going to really help direct our next step. So I know if I'm doing something or as the organization, we're doing something and we're not getting results and we can dial it down or figure it out and dial in to understand that the strategy just is flawed. Hey, we're executing everything exactly as we had planned. It's not bringing the results we thought. Uh, and the environment around us is what we expected it to be, then ultimately that may be a, a strategic decision to change. Uh, sometimes everything we had planned from an execution standpoint is right on spot on, but the environment around us has changed and we're living through one right now, in which case it doesn't mean that strategy won't make sense. It might just be a timing thing. Maybe this is not the right strategy to use right now, Given all the stuff that's going on in the environment, we need to shift gears and change to a different direction and come back to that at a different time. That, in a lot of cases, can make sense. So is it the execution of the plan or is it some external uh, environmental uh, issue that's going on that's temporary that might be affecting the results of that plan that we have so far. So that's a little bit of context to help make that decision. But I also think about in some cases, uh, we abandon plans just because of other factors, not that the the plan itself won't work, but we just get demotivated. And this might be even at an organizational level. Sometimes there's not enough uh, focus or uh, motivation to execute on this plan the way it needs to for a long enough period of time. But also when we look at our lives in general, there's a lot of things that we know we need to do or should be doing or even start to do that we don't have the motivation to keep going. Um, and a lot of times, I, I, one of the greatest concepts I got out of Strategic Coach with Dan Sullivan is the concept called the gap, which is when you're in the midst of of a plan to get to an ideal place. Uh, sometimes what throws you off is just focusing so much on the difference between where you are right now and where you're trying to get to. Okay, so my current state and where my ideal state is might be such a big gap that that in and of itself, focusing on that can be really demotivating and demoralizing and deflating and the feeling of being defeated already. If I'm focused overly on that gap, top people, what I find, top people focus on the progress that they have made more than the gap between where they are and where they are trying to get to. So it doesn't matter if I'm a day or a month or a year into my work toward a goal, 
if I can look back and say I've made progress, that in and of itself will give me fuel to keep going. Okay, and that's what top people tend to be good at, not focusing up here in that gap area, but they're focused on the progress and that motivates them to keep going. Um, and that's an important concept if you think about it, because ultimately uh, when we dwell on where we want to be and the difference, it's great to have visualization and think about our big goals. But if we stick too long in that ultimate gap, that creates a dissatisfaction and ultimately can throw us off course to where we're trying to get to, which is ironic because you would think that that would motivate us to get moving a little bit further. But here's one of the things I want to talk about. Um, and I'm going to use running as an example. So running uh, is one of these things, and this is me personally talking, running is one of these things I just hate. Uh, I actually love the effects of running. I love how I feel after after running, that runner's high. And most runners you talk to say the same thing. But I hate the actual act of running. I love the result of what it does. It keeps me in shape. And, and that feeling of accomplishment after I've gotten done, I just... I love that. It's euphoric, right? And I really seek that. But the pain of actual running, especially me, I'm a big guy. I don't think I'm physically meant to, I'm not really built to be out there running long distances. Again, that's my own mindset. So there it is, that negative, it's a negative mindset that's preventing me. Maybe I, maybe I can do, you know, ultra marathon uh, someday if I had a different attitude. But my focus on running, when I think about running, is the pain of actually going through the process of running. And what gets me out there, though, is if I focus enough on the reward. But at the same point, I lose that battle a lot. You know, sometimes there's just days that I just don't want to get out there and do it, even though I know it's something that I need to do. And oftentimes, even when I start, it can be demotivating when I start to think, wow, I'm only a half a mile in and I'm trying to do three miles or four miles or five miles or whatever it is. I'm only a fraction of the way in. So what I started thinking about is, okay, I need to figure out a way to block out that, that feeling, those negative distractions that come about. And sometimes it's just the thought of how much more I have to do that's demotivating enough to throw me off course. And ultimately, I may not run that full five miles that I'm trying to run. Enter in my hat. Okay. This is just an easy concept that what I figured out is if I run and wear a hat, and just kind of keep my head down. Now, granted, hopefully I'm not running in the middle of the street and get hit by a car. That wouldn't be too good. But if I can keep my head down and I'm just running and I've got my hat, the only thing I can see is the roadway that's maybe six feet ahead of me, right? It blocks out everything else. I can't see that big hill that's coming up. I can't see the fact that this road goes on for like a mile or two miles and I got to get to the end of it. All I can see is the six feet in front of me, right? So if I'm doing that and I actually have everything else blocked out, what that's enabling me to do is stay focused on the stuff that's most important, which is really just the six feet of roadway in front of me. But what it's also doing, it's giving me this sense of accomplishment and, 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 and it's this simplicity of saying, hey, that's all, that's all I got to do is I got to run the six feet. Well, then I got to do it again and again, but all I need to focus on is, okay, I got to run to the edge of my hat. That's it. I got to run to the edge of my hat. I got to run to the edge of my hat. And what's kind of cool about it is physically blocking that out of view, the rest of the run that's ahead of me makes me actually feel better because I kind of get distracted almost. You know, I'm listening to my stuff, my audio book or whatever, or music, and I'm lost in that. I'm just focused on the roadway six feet ahead of me. And then I don't, before I know it, I lift up my head and I see, wow, I've made a lot more progress than I even thought I would. It's a method that helps me distract myself from the things that will actually distract myself, if that makes sense. So the negative influences that I'm going to get from seeing that long roadway ahead of me or thinking of the fact that I got four and a half miles to go, uh, this hat helps me block that out. So the question is, and the challenge is, can you think of different ways you can do that ultimately in your life that will help you do the things that you know you need to do but don't want to do? And businesses run the same way. There's all kinds of external forces or internal forces that are going to throw us off track from the things that we know we need to be doing, but ultimately don't. The things that we know that will make our organizations better, but ultimately don't. We have all kinds of shiny objects that distract us and maybe things that entice us to move in different directions and divert our course or attention from that current path that we're on. And in a lot of cases, we end up deviating too soon or stopping before we ultimately were going to hit the biggest rewards that we would have hit. 
So it's a strategy, not just for personal, but also for business to help us stay focused on those things. The last thing I'll leave you with is a lot of times uh, we have to think about as individuals, as leaders, what are the things that ultimately we know we need to be doing that we are not doing uh, as well? And one of the one of the questions I always ask is, is as I look around to as I'm running a business and I'm looking at other businesses, the business, the best businesses out there, what are they doing that I am not doing, and why am I not doing that? Uh, sometimes there might be a good reason for it, but I at least have to ask that question. As an individual, if I look at people that are ultra successful, what are they doing that I'm not doing? Now, what I tend to do is rationalize in my head that the little things that I see them doing are not really contributing to their success. And so I rationalize myself not doing those things that they're doing. I'll give you a great example. I remember a time in my life, in early in my career, where I was one of these guys who was late to everything. Um, and I remember that. And by the way, you know, lateness, being late to stuff is actually a conscious decision that you make. It's not an accident. It's not just here and there. The people that you know in your life that are late to everything, which I was this person at one point early in my life, um, those people make a conscious decision that it's okay for them to be late. And it's actually their, it's, their time is more important than other people's time because oftentimes their lateness interferes with other people's days. This was me. If I had to meet somebody at 3 o'clock, I wouldn't show up till 3.30 or sometimes quarter or 4. I remember a time vividly and the day that this light bulb went off when I realized it was affecting my business. And I would, we would have, this was when I was graduated college, 22 years old, first job. We'd have our training classes at nine o'clock in the morning. Now, granted, I lived like 10 minutes away from the office and I would wake up at like 8.30 in the morning, shower real quick, put my suit on, out the door at 8.45. I'd barely make it at like nine o'clock. Sometimes I'd come in at 9.01, 9.05, whatever. I was just this guy that would just be last minute. And I remember that feeling of stress and everything like that. And the day that it kind of hit me was I was coming into the office. I remember I was in the car and I was at the intersection across from the office. And it was about 9.05. I'd gotten even a later start than normal. So I was already late for class. I'm at the intersection. There's a red light. And my collar is up because I'm, I'm putting on my, my tie at the intersection. I'm sitting here with the rear view mirror and I'm putting my tie on and literally getting dressed in the car as I'm driving to the office and I'm already late for this class that already started like five minutes ago. Across the intersection is the manager of the office, the field vice president as we call them, and real intimidating guy. <laughs> uh, and, and, and was in his car on the other side of the intersection and he was looking at me. And he made eye contact with me. And I still remember to this day the expression on his face as he saw me, collar popped, late for the office, obviously, putting on my tie. And he just looked at me and did one of these things. He just shook his head and just looked at me. Just That was it. Just this little shake of the head. And I remember what an impact that had on me because I, it just snapped me to reality at that point. I'm like, wow, what am I doing I'm this guy that has made a conscious decision that it's actually okay to start my day late. And I and at the same point, I was expecting, I was perplexed as to why I was not having success, which is even weirder, right? And I was rationalizing my head. I'm like, well, that extra hour, I know, I know the most successful people in the office at that time were coming in at like seven o'clock in the morning, at least by eight. But I was saying, well, well, you know, I work late anyway. I work to, in the evenings. I mean, what's the extra hour? That doesn't really make the difference. I was convincing myself of that. And what, what unsuccessful people do is they rationalize those successful behaviors they, or the unsuccessful behaviors. So for me, coming in at 9 o'clock, hey, you know, I do know successful people that come in at 9 o'clock. Well, yeah, maybe that's because they've been doing their business for 20 or 25 years or they're independently wealthy or they run the business. Here I was coming in, entry-level role, working my way up, and I felt like it was okay to do that. That day was a wake-up moment for me, and that was the day I stopped being late. I actually made the decision that I'm never going to do that again, and I never did. To this day, I'm like I, I freaked out if I'm like one minute late for anything, and that's been that way for the last 25 years. 
But that will, all that took was one decision. That was one decision from that one interaction that ultimately changed that behavior in my entire life. Because for me, that was a major wake-up call. And I started asking, okay, granted, I may not buy the fact that coming in at 7 o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock in the morning is really going to suddenly change my life and success will start coming. Uh, But I did have to say, you know what? Do most successful people come in at 7 in the morning or do they come in at 9 o'clock? And the honest answer I had to say was, well, most successful people come in early in the morning. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. And what were the other habits that they do? Well, you know, they, they do some kind of, they sharpen the saw, they read the papers or the news or whatever it is that, that are going to prep them for the day in that career, at least. Uh, they get their day organized. They make some extra phone calls, maybe early in the morning. They just get their mental state ready. Maybe they work out in the morning, whatever. But successful people have a much different routine in the morning and a start time for their morning And let me try this. Let me throw myself into this and see what it does. And ultimately that worked. Now, can I pinpoint and say that one decision changed and started creating the success? No, but it's the aggregation of the small little stuff. And if you do the things that successful people do, and as a company, if I do the things that successful companies do and use the principles and the models and the processes and things that they have and adopt their types of style or culture or decision-making models, whatever it is, ultimately that's success is going to be, uh, that's going to come to me and that's going to impact my life or my organization. Simple principle. Again, while I'm wearing the hat, uh, it's a good aha moment for me. And I hope that was beneficial for you to share some of the uh, takeaways that I had. So again, keep the ideas and the questions coming. This gives great content for these podcasts. Your suggestions and guests are certainly welcomed. Make sure you like, make sure you share, comment, all that kind of good stuff. Thanks for joining today, everybody. Take care.